today's face-off on Fox Soul. Challengers Quan LX and Big Angry Adams ready to go blow by blow on those hot topics. Face-off on Fox Soul starts right now. Going up to people and first seeing them for stuff and we started to fight back against them. He says when the two men then demanded cash from the register, he tried to open it. He says one of the bad guys then hit him on the head with a gun. He tells me he felt emboldened to stand his ground, especially when he realized the gun he had just been attacked with was fake. In this round, here's Charles Big Angry Adams. Quanell, St. Louis, Missouri, a, a town, a city that has been mired in incredible amounts of violent crime, one of the worst crime-ridden cities in this country. Young African-American man, Michael Harris, gets up, goes to work every damn day, and there's a robbery. Two men walk in, they hold a gun, they say it's a, they're robbing the place, they start robbing individual customers. Then they turn their attention to the cash register Mr. Harris trying to open it, apparently not acting fast enough. He gets pistol whipped. But he notices once he got pistol whipped that they broke that gun on his head because it was a fake gun. And then he managed to hem one of those robbers up and hold him for the police. So at this point, he wasn't just a victim of a robbery. He was a victim of assault. He was defending his person. He defended his person. He did not know if the, the bad guy had another weapon. He held him and restrained him until police got there. And you know what Starbucks did to thank him for that? They fired his ass. And now he's suing. And I think Harris should be. He should be given the key to the damn city. He should be applauded. He should be rewarded. He should be given a bonus by Starbucks. Instead, he's having to sue just to try to get his damn job back and a paycheck. It's a disgusting state of America right now where the good guys are treated like bad guys and the bad guys are treated like good guys. Charles, in a case like this, we don't want to see anyone harmed or anyone being robbed in these convenience stores or these restaurants. The problem in this case is the young man did sign an agreement with Starbucks at the beginning of his employment that if there was a criminal act taking place inside of Starbucks, particularly a robbery, he would not physically get involved or fight back that he would comply. When I looked into this, the reason why chains like Starbucks and other restaurants, McDonald's, Burger King, etc., they are making it a written policy that if there's a robbery, that their employees cannot get involved. Why? Because their employees, when they get killed, then their families are doing wrongful death lawsuits against the chain and suing the restaurants like Starbucks, McDonald's, etc. And when they're injured, then they're filing these claims, working compensation claims, working compensation claims in these states that have that against the chains also to pay those medical bills. The chains realize that it's safer and cheaper for the employees not to fight back against these robberies. And I want to say to that young brother, you did a great job defending and protecting your life. You did, young brother. But what I don't want to see is these young men and women lose their life fighting a robber over a cup of coffee. There's not a cup of coffee in Starbucks on earth that's more precious and sacred than a human life of an employee. Comply with those robbers, give them what they want, and let the police deal with it. There is nothing good in the long term that can come from you being physically harmed, injured, or even killed by fighting one of these robbers. In this case, the gun was fake, and we thank God it was fake, for that young man is alive. But once he was assaulted and he realized it was fake, he had a right to defend himself, yes. But at the same time, I don't want to see employees engaging physically and fighting these robbers who have guns and they have nothing to defend themselves with. You know, I'm always shocked at your inclination to defend violent criminals, especially when they're African American, in all situations, right? Here we have a man who was complying. Michael Harris did not intercede when he was robbing all the poor individual customers. Michael Harris was trying to open the cash register at the demand of the robbers. But he didn't do it quick enough, so they pistol whipped and broke the pistol. At this point, this is not him interceding on behalf of the robbery. This is him defending himself from assault. And once you've defended yourself from assault and you've restrained a bad guy, well, damn it, you ain't going to let him go. What if he has another weapon? What if he picks up a weapon? No, at that point, I understand, as I said in my opening. No, you didn't. I understand him fighting Man, back at that point. stop acting like When he you recognized didn't that the gun was segment. not real. When he realized the gun was not real and he was being hit, then of course you can fight back at that point. Okay, if you're being physically so, assaulted. so he should have been fired. But I don't 
believe that that young man or any other young man or woman working at these fast food or restaurant chains should fight these robbers back. Your life is too sacred, man. Whatever they take can be replaced. It's insured. But if they take your life, an insurance policy won't, won't bring that back. So you're saying he shouldn't have been fired. That's what, what I'm, you're saying. No, what I'm saying is they should sympathize with that young man and give him his job back. But I understand why they terminated right, well, him because on. they had to follow let's policy. Uh, the policy uh, that even he signed. So on our, our local, local Fox face-off here in Houston, Texas, we had a cashier who was shot and killed after following two, two suspected thieves who had stolen a bag of chips. One of these pulled out a gun and shot the man and killed him. And you said it was the cashier's fault for following the bad guys. Right. So, so when are you on the cashier's side and when are you on the robber's side? What I said side? was the two young men went in the store, stole a bag of chips. In fact, both young men, I turned in. And the video shows the young man stealing a bag of chips. You the went young on men, TV and you blame the cashier let me finish, for his though. death. Let me finish. The young men never displayed a weapon inside the store. They never displayed a weapon at the store or outside the store. Okay. The clerk comes outside and confronts them about the bag of chips. No, he didn't. The young man leaves. Yeah, he confronted him outside, yes. Okay. The video shows he confronted him in the store, go outside and confront him in front of the store. They walk away and leave after cursing back and forth. He then gets in his car, gets his weapon, gets in his car, finds them down the street. He drives down the street, finds you them. You need that story And to then be the true. young man says when he confronts him again, he has a weapon and flashes the weapon, they shoot him. That clerk oh, should a, not do all a, of that over a, a shoplift bag of chips. Year, well, the police should a respond. bag of chips the police is should not respond. more important than that clerk's life. A murder life. victim the is clerk not the bad too actor. Far. Okay, first of all, there's been nothing in the filings that suggests he had a gun. You're just listening no, to the word. the young man You're said listening. he had a gun. Oh, the murderer said. That gun. Oh, the murderer and said he had a gun. gun and the I court. wonder, I wonder, Cornell. And they did find I, a gun I, in the car. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. They found a gun in the car. Yes, they did. Here's the thing. You know what? We always know what your position is going to be based on the race of the actors, right? If these were Come two on, Charles, Latin or, or white stop, robbers Charles, that then shot and killed a black cashier, you'd be marching about it. He did all of that for a bag of chips. You'd be marching about it. He did all for right? a bag of chips. No, it's not the murder victim's fault. You don't do all fault. that for a bag of chips, okay, Charles. First of all, if, chips you try ain't to, worth your life. if you try to stop a, a thief, and they use physical force to to effectuate the theft. That becomes a robbery. That's but what happened. But they didn't here. do that. Oh no, they got a physical confrontation. No, they didn't do that. And then they left. No, they did oh, not. You just like to there make up no whatever fact. physical confrontation the truth inside the store. Is, thank or outside God. the store. Thank there was God no confrontation that there are Americans or that are willing to stand up to all the criminals don't that the police lose aren't responding to. Over a bag of damn potato hey, you chips. You know what? You don't always have to take the criminal side. Your thank life is worth more than bag of potato chips. Thank God there are people willing to try to stop the tidal wave this of man crime get you in this country. This man will get you killed. Get you back harder. That's why I grew up in Harlem. Not so. if the country's at stake, right? He, won. he became president of the United States uh, with that same personality. I, I don't think that, you know, he, listen, I think it's worse with Biden calling MAGA. Biden's anger and vitriol and hatred for MAGA it's far more worse than President Trump's individual battles with someone who crosses him. In this round, here's Quanell X. Charles, a Fox News host and contributor, but more than a contributor, host of his own show, Charles Payne seriously criticized President Biden because of what he accused half of the American voters to be. He said that those who support MAGA and Donald Trump, he despises those voters. But Donald Trump is a man that causes a whole lot of vitriol from a lot of people because that's what he spews. But Donald Trump has never, ever said anything to where those who support Biden, he hates all of them. That's not something the sitting president of the United States should ever say about anyone that's voting in this country. Hillary Clinton tried that same playbook against President Trump. It did not work. But Charles Payne is correct. I don't know enough about Mr. Payne to say I like him or don't like him. But in the analysis that he made and the analogy that he used in criticizing President Biden for criticizing half of the voting bloc that voted for Donald Trump, the MAGA supporters, saying that they are despised by him, that's a mistake. President Biden's job as a sitting president is to convince those voters he's not what they've been lied to about who and what he is. His job is to well inform if they've been ill informed. His job is to change them and unite them with the country. That's what the leader of the quote unquote free world should do. But to come out before an election and just say half of the voters who voted for Donald Trump in the last election that I ran against Mr. Trump, 
they are despised by me. To speak, follow them in any kind of way is a mistake because if he needs the independent vote, if he needs votes that are somewhat democratically conservative, your duty is to pull them all together as many as you can, but not openly condemn them like this. You are an absolute moving target. Just on the last show, you were, you were condemning Tim Scott for making a comment about how much he loved Trump after Donald Trump suggested that Tim Scott hates Nikki Haley. This week on the campaign trail, Donald Trump has said every Republican that supports Nikki Haley needs to get thrown out of the party. You're talking about a man that demonizes everyone that has run against him, both inside and outside of his party, in the most horrifying terms in Donald Trump. And yet you're criticizing, and there is plenty of reason to be critical of Joe Biden, right? He's been touting his economy in the gangbuster stock market. But the truth is, 93% of the wealth in the stock market is owned by the top 10% of Americans, right? There is very little of the benefit of the Biden economy trickling down to the working everyday man. In fact, it's, the inflation is out of control. Cost of living is out of control. Rent has skyrocketed. Biden has done an awful job. But for you to focus on Biden's political criticism, of course, just like we, we have reduced this country to two old ass men who say and, you know, for, tweet whatever horrible thing they can think of. In fact, I don't think I, I think Trump has his own bad, mean tweets. I don't even think Biden is responsible for the ugly things that he's spewing on Twitter. I think he's too busy sundowning and losing his damn mind, and it's some young Democrat kid typing up the crap. But this is everyone. This is what politics are now. For the sitting president to say half of the voters, he's trying to win an election against him. He despises them. To convince. That's not the way you win an election. Do you agree with that? Well, it depends, right? Because you know. Donald Trump condemned liberals in in no uncertain terms when he beat Hillary Clinton, right? Now, Hillary Clinton referred to people as deplorables, and that got a lot of traction, a lot of news. And and it helped him lose. Well, but but his condemnation helped him win. And it really depends, because right now, what the Biden campaign is trying to do is it's trying to convince America that, one, Trump is a criminal and shouldn't be allowed on the ballot, and two, everyone that supports Donald Trump is either stupid gullible or a criminal. That's the goal because Biden can't win this election unless he either prohibits Donald Trump from being on the ballot or can brainwash America into thinking that Donald Trump is the end of times. Now, do I think Trump will be a good president? Hell no. Nor do I think Biden will be. But I think it's absurd to and it's just it's just conservative but pundits in Mr. like Payne's Payne analogy. pointing the finger across the table and said, "Oh my God, I can't believe Biden did that. Why isn't he talking about Trump?" But wait a minute. Why isn't he saying because anything about Fox Trump? Because Fox News don't talk about Trump like but, that. But, oh, they do? The same way CNN don't talk about Biden like that. The same way MSNBC don't talk about Biden like that. All of these corporate news giants have picked a side, let's be honest. We cannot truly find a fair and independent news source that has no dog in the race when it comes to either candidate, in my opinion. But Mr. Payne uh, had hold a on, smart hold analysis. On, hold on. I got to stride on. Normally, I do not cut you off. You're the interrupter. But I got to stridently disagree with you right here, right now. Go I got to stridently disagree. If you want to find fair, accurate discussions that aren't biased towards one candidate or another, the only thing you got to do is come to Fox Soul and turn in the face off. Because you know but what? That I hate happens. Biden. I hate Trump. And I but, thought you hated him. I know Charles, you've got a MAGA hat over there. Charles, but I thought you hated Charles, them both with me. But it's true that they can get the facts here. Put your MAGA hat on. Only when you're not speaking. Put, put your MAGA so, hat on. I, I agree. If you come listen to me, you're going to get the raw adulterated truth. Oh, my but God. But Mr. Payne well, weren't you did just make telling a America valid point that women that are as mistake, oppressed here as they are in Iran? President, to make that analogy when he's pending now at a, a second rematch with Donald Trump. And I think Donald Trump should stop talking about Nikki Haley. Oh, right. He should speak about Biden. Hey, Donald Leave Trump. Leave Haley alone. That race is over with. Focus on the president because that's who you're well, really going to be fighting against to become president of the United well, States of America. What Donald Trump needs to do is try to seize the ideological high ground because he spent his whole pre- presidency mean tweeting on Twitter. Right, no matter how he well the economy was up, doing, no matter how well his criminal justice past. reform, how did he grow up? He's like 97 I, no, I years old. And, 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 and what's Biden, 103? No. 
When I say grow up, I don't mean chronologically grow up. I mean grow up mentally, psychologically, and spiritually and be a better man. Well, that's man. not going to happen. And I agree. I don't think it's going to happen either. The truth is. Because if you watch what, his behavior now, what Trump Donald Trump still has not about grown up. is how Biden, one, has lost his damn mind. There was some audio from earlier today where he just rambling on like he didn't even speak English. He's, he's clearly had some cognitive decline. Of course, so is Trump with him talking, referring to Nikki Haley, talking about Nancy Pelosi. They're both too damn old to be president. I don't think but, there'll be a debate. Uh, I don't think. I, I don't think well, there's going to be one I, debate I think, between I think Biden's going to say, oh, no, he's a criminal. I don't have to debate him because you know they and last time they had them all hamped up on something right because he all of a sudden biden seemed to know what the hell was going on i don't think there's enough drugs on the planet that biden can be coherent for two hours well, anymore can, well, you can share some of yours with you hey share some of my 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 smart drugs mm. i don't need those for you because you, you like to chew you, on. you are easy mm. right because all them, you are whatever dope drinks oh, you like my, drink. my dope dope fiend adam you look at me high as hell now At City Hall, Council Member Curtis Jones handed over the blueprint for a safer Philadelphia to incoming Mayor Sherelle Parker. We know we can use this to develop what we're going to refer to as our action plan. Jones chairs the Committee on Public Safety and says in September, more than 140 stakeholders from the community developed public safety recommendations during a crime summit at St. Joseph's University. Not to point fingers at each other, but to point fingers at solutions. In this round, here's Charles Big Angry Adams. You know what I found fascinating about this action plan in Philadelphia is that Curtis Jones, who was the architect, right? He got up there at the pulpit and said, we're, we're, not, we're not pointing fingers at anybody, but if you actually read the action plan, which I guess a lot of people didn't bother to do, it, it does point fingers. You got a, a Overwhelmingly African-American city in Philadelphia, beautiful city, wonderful food, wonderful sports scene, just a wonderful city. I am a big fan of Philadelphia. I enjoy every time I visit there, although I did almost get a fight for wearing an Astros cap in South Philly. I think it's a great damn city, and great. But when you look at this action plan in this city that is mired in violent crime, tremendous amounts of crime, they, they do point the finger. They, they point the finger right here. They point the finger at white America, right? Institutional white racism is the reason for the crime in Philadelphia, and they need to get rid of They got too many white teachers, and if they get rid of them white teachers, well, that's going to make Philadelphia safer. And if every teacher takes a diversity, equity, and inclusion class, because that's a great, that's a multi-million dollar industry, well, that's going to make Philadelphia a lot safer. Instead of taking that consultant money and spending it on, on after-school programs, on spending on better facilities for these kids because the school system in Philadelphia is underwater and it's underwater with violence and crime. Instead of spending money on the damn kids, instead of addressing the fact that the, the criminals are out of control and there's not enough law enforcement action, no, nope, just like you always say it, no, it, it's Whitey's fault, even though there's not a lot of Whitey around there. Charles, with all due respect. Oh, come on. I bet I'm not going to get I any. I want to say that it is Do you important. think it's white America's fault? Let me answer. I gave you your time. You oh, no, no. Money. I'm asking you a question. Let me get my time. Okay. Like I gave you yours. You, you interrupt me all the damn you time. Arrogant, you're uh, okay. I'm now, a European. Back to what I was saying. I'm, I'm a European. I was born right here there in these United no, States. There is no action plan to solve the problems of crime in the inner cities of black America that should lay at the feet of any white person, any white institution. The only way that we as black people can fix the internal criminal problem that lies within our community is what we do what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said. He said, if we don't come together as a people and do for ourselves, we would suffer the consequences. It is not the white man's responsibility to fix the criminal problem within a black community. It is the responsibility of black people to come together, unite around a universal black agenda that uplifts all black people and commits and creates real service to service to one another. What we must fight is not institutional racism. We must fight institutional white supremacy. Because one thing we've learned about racism, at the root of racism is white supremacy that is a disease of the human mind. And if we can fight white supremacy in every major institution in America, then we won't change a city, we will change a nation. But black people cannot look 
or lay the burden of the responsibility for fixing the criminal problem in our community at the feet of the white man. We have the great black geniuses, the black intelligentsia, the black scholars, the black civil and social workers. We got black activists and black and black grassroots workers who can come together collectively and solve our problems at the root of the black man's problem when it comes to crime is poverty and self-hatred. If we could fight the institutional self-hatred that is practiced among black people and practiced on ourselves, self-hate is the number one killer of black people in the black community. The white man can't fix that. We have to fix that. So if we're looking for any benevolent white man, a white institution to give us the money or to give us the intelligence and the wherewithal to solve these problems, we're barking up the wrong tree and we're asking the wrong source. God has given us everything we need as black people to solve our problems and fix it, but we first have to fix the problem of institutional self-hatred and then white supremacy and white racism will die. Uh, okay, so the soliloquy you said is kind of all over the place. First of all, it is your opinion that every institution in America is defined by white supremacy, and that white supremacy is to blame, right? I said major e institutions. E major, well, infected well, by well, Philadelphia, health care, education, yeah, criminal oh, justice. Oh, please, yes. Please, please. So Philadelphia is a major institution. It's one of the biggest cities in this country. It is overwhelmingly people of color in the city, in the portions of the city that are underwater in crime. And yet here you are blaming white America. I didn't do that. It went, oh, yes, you did. You, I you, said you gotta, we you gotta, have to fix you, it. You, oh, but you still blamed white America. In I fact, blame white in, supremacy. In fact, you want a universal black solution, right, as opposed to just a universal American solution. What you are wanting to do is still blame white America while acting like you're not and, and propose that we should have this new segregation. Instead of saying, hey, let's figure out the crime problem. Let's figure out, let's look at the victimizers and the criminals and the law abiders. I don't care what color of skin they are. I'm talking about what kind of good people versus bad people, right? And that good and bad, that's not defined by race. But in your America, in your mind, every solution, everything, first of all, you always blame whitey. That's what you've been doing for years. But secondly, and it used to be other people like the gays and the Jews, but you dial that back a little bit now. You want some help so, now. So no, you, so, so you want to try to lump everybody no, else in I don't with wanna, your situation. I don't be, you, are, you, are defined, me, you are defined by your hatreds, right? Charles, Instead of defined by solutions, the solutions black America the black doesn't need a criminal fix, problem. Fix America lies within us. All America needs to because fix all of America. We have a White, black, brown, suffering. Asian, anything. And a unique problem hey, in this no, country. No one is talking. First we of all, have to fix you our ain't own suffering. problems. White folks right? can't do it you for us. You ain't suffering. And black people sell that, are that low suffering. Crap. Okay, but are you suffering? And, oh, I am my people. You okay. know why? I'm gonna tell you something. So, so our, what did our, Muhammad Ali say? Our, 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 what did Muhammad our, Ali say? Our, our they said, Mr. Are... Ali, you're worth millions. So, why are you worried about the black problem? He said, so, because no matter how many millions I have, I'm still okay. sorry as a so, Negro. So, 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 so no matter how much so you got, should, you are still a Negro all, in the eyes of should, white supremacy should, in America. So, so you don't no have, matter how much money you, you, you don't got. have. You, you don't have individual experiences just yes. because you're a black man. I do. No, we're all individuals. But I'm connected to all of my people. And we should all try to fix solutions for all of America. You can't fix black people. Ladies and gentlemen, I truly believe what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, that we as black people have every talent that we need to solve our own problems. In fact, he said that if black people just decided to unite and come together, that our unity would be more powerful than an atomic bomb. According to financial scholars, they say that black people's earning power and spending power in America would make us the 10th richest nation on earth. With all of that wealth, what have we built? What have we produced? What have we accomplished collectively as a people with our collective spending power? We have the resources. We just got to have the right mindset to do it. And so I appreciate them in Philadelphia fighting white racism, institutional racism, but institutional black self-hatred is at the root. If we fix that, then we'll overcome everything else, have it wrapped around our pinky finger. But I also want to say this. Trump has a good chance of winning this re-election that Biden is running for. He's going to lose, and Trump is coming. Okay. What the, the issue I have is that whenever 
my opponent here frames any answer or any collectivism. It's always based on racial lines, right? And, and you know, with the, the city leaders, the city councilman, Curtis Jones, and their, the architect of his plan, it has to find a boogeyman. It has to find somebody to blame. And right now in America, the, the du jour thing to blame without being called a bigot or a racist is to say, oh, it's white people's fault, right? But what we need to do is we need to move past that and start looking for solutions for all Americans. There are more white Americans in aggregate numbers living in poverty than black Americans. There are more black Americans per capita living in, in poverty. There are more black male violent criminals than there are white male violent criminals despite the difference in the population. But what we should look at is not black male violent criminals or white male violent criminals. We should look at violent criminals. Us good law-abiding people should hate bad criminals and try to fix America for all Americans no matter what their skin color is. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs>